Well, the last hundred years, especially uh, the years after, immediately after World War I, uh, established something like a bridgehead for U.S. popular culture in Europe, including jazz. Professor Reinhold Wageleiter, distinguished historian at the University of Salzburg, is a two and a half time U.S. government program alumnus. He is the recipient of Fulbright as well as ACLS grants and a Salzburg Global Seminar Fellow. His brother, Gunter Wagenleitner, a graduate of the renowned Mozarteum University at Salzburg, has been a fixture on the Austrian music scene since the 1960s. After the Second World War, jazz and all its derivatives blew up the world of music, and in March 1965, Louis Armstrong even brought that wonderful world of jazz to East Germany for a few days. After 1945, it came an, an American soldiers, and uh, one black man, he was from New Orleans, he was a piano player, and he played boogie boogie. I was six years old, six, seven years old, and I tried to play it also in this style. I think I was the, the only child in Austria just on it. From Fatty George to Fritz Power, from Karl Drego to Hans Koller, from Georg Breinschmidt to Erich Kleinschuster, from Herbert Joos to Hans Koller, and Manfred and Rudolf Josel, from Michael Mantel, or Michael Mantler, as he's called now, to Christian and Wolfgang Mutschke, from Richard Österreicher to Werner Pirchner, from Attila Zoller to Johannes Fering, and of course, from Friedrich Gulder to Joe Zawinul, Austria tremendously contributed to the world of jazz. Uh, the exchange with U.S. American students and colleagues has been tremendously important in my whole life and in my outlook at the study of history. U.S. Uh, historiographic theories were very important for me. But the most important thing uh, that the U.S. gave to me in my life was jazz. As Louis Armstrong once quit jazz, you'll know it when you hear it.